The first steps of the introduction of a bill to the House. First off, a bill is proposed law presented to the House or Senate for consideration. Many of the most important bills originate from the executive branch. Business, labor, agriculture, and other special interest groups often draft measures. Only measures can introduce bills in the House, which is done by dropping them into the hopper. Once a letter will be sent every member to every member before the bill is introduced to inform them about the measure and why the sponsor thinks it should be a law. The clerk of the House members each bill as it is introduced and also gives a brief summary of each bill. Afterwards, the bill is entered into the House Journal and the Congressional Record for the day. The journal contains the minutes, official record, and daily proceedings of the House. The Congressional Record is the lengthy account of the daily proceedings. That is the bill's first reading. All bills are immediately printed and handed to each member. Each bill is passed in either House is given three readings, the third being right before the final vote. Although the Constitution makes no mention of standing committees, these bodies play an, an essential role in the lawmaking process. The standing committee looks over all the bills given to them, rejecting most and passing on only the seemingly important ones. Most of the bills introduced in each session of Congress are pigeonholed, meaning they are simply put away and never acted upon. A discharge petition enables members to force a bill that has remained in committee 30 days on the floor for consideration. If any member files a discharge motion and it is signed by the majority of the House, the committee has seven days to report the bill. If it is not reported, the bill is sent to the floor and must be considered at once. Once a bill reaches a committee, the chairman almost always refers to it refers it to subcommittees. When a subcommittee has completed its work on a bill, the measure goes to the full committee. At the chairman's direction, the body may do one of several things. Report the bill favorably with a due pass recommendation, refu refuse the, to report the bill, meaning pigeonhole it, report the bill uh, in amended form, report the bill with an unfav unfavorable recommendation, report the committee bill. What? Oh, sorry. There are five calendars in the lower house. The union calendar is for all bills having to do with revenues, appropriations, or government property. The house calendar is for all <coughs> other public bills. The private calendar is for all private bills. The correction calendar is for all bills from the union or house calendar taken out of order by unanimous consent of the House of Representatives. The discharge calendar is for petitions to discharge bills from the committee. Bills are taken from each of these calendars for consideration on a regularly scheduled basis. The arrangements are not followed too closely. Because of the critical role that the Rules Committee plays, it must grant a rule before most bills can reach the floor. Before most measures can be taken from a calendar, the Rules Committee must approve the exception sets a, and sets a time for its appearance on the floor. If a rule is not granted, the Rules Committee can kill it. Or when the Rules Committee does not grant a rule, it may be a special rule. A special rule sets a time limit on floor debate, and it also prohibits amendments. If a House suspends the rule, it must be approved by a two-third core of the members present. The House then moves so far away from its established operating procedures that a measure can go through all necessary steps in a single day. If a bill reaches the floors, it receives a second reading in the House. Minor or small bills are considered with little to no opposition. Larger bills are considered by the Committee of the Whole. The Committee of the Whole includes all members of the House, but only 100 need to be present. This is used to speed up the bills on the floor. When the Committee is in session, the Speaker steps down because the House is no longer in session. General debate begins when the bill is read section by section and amendments are offered. Within a five-minute time frame, supporters or opponents of each amendment have to make their cases. Votes are taken in each section and its amendments. When the bill has gone through the, the committee of the whole, it dissolves itself and immediately the House is taken back in, is back in session. Speeder, speaker resumes the chair and the House adopts the committee's work. Okay. The House has imposed several limits on floor debates. One member can't hold the floor for more than one hour unless there is a unanimous consent to speak for longer. The speaker can force anyone who strays from the subject to give up the floor. 
Any member can demand to vote an issue before the House. Voice votes are most common. The speaker calls for A's and then no's. The members answer in a chorus and the results are recorded. And if, if any member believes there is to be an error in the judging of voice vote, he may demand a standing vote. One fifth of a quorum can demand a teller vote. These have been mainly replaced with electronic voting. A roll call vote may be demanded by one fifth of the members present. The House has now installed a computerized voting system. Once a bill has been approved at second reading, it is engrossed, meaning printed in final form. The bill is read for a third time by title, then the final vote is taken. Bills are always approved at third reading and then signed by the Speaker. A page carries it to the Senate on the side of the Capitol and places it on the Senate President's <laughs> desk. Oh my god. Uh, and